Hi, I'm Joanne Dicknair, Meemaw, with It's Storytime, Meemaw, an answered prayer for stories that point children to God on the Truth Network for Kids. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it. Share it. But most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. When will the culture of death end in America? When will we stop killing our young? Friends, is this is this about left and right, or is this about right and wrong? I'm with a young lady who is doing something about it. She's with the Susan B. Anthony organization. She loves the Lord, and she loves life. Her name's Emily Osmond, and you have some Winston-Salem roots, which is kind of cool, in North Carolina. Even though Truth Talk is all over the country, we sure like our North Carolina peeps. That's right, Sue. I was born in North Carolina in a town called Wilson, um, and also, I'm pretty sure I've worked in every Chili's in the Winston-Salem <laughs> area around there. I used to wait tables, so yeah. Well, tell, tell us, there's a lot of pressing things going on, but bring our listeners up to date, will you, Emily, on what's at stake right now with the current in the Supreme Courts, in the states, the talk of, uh, you know, of ending this this assault on our children, this this horrible bloodbath in America, 50-plus million babies dead. Finally, we're making some progress, and Roe v. Wade was overturned, but even people that should be, should be cheering that or bemoaning that. Talk to us real quick. Give us the latest on what's going on and what you do with your ministry. Yes, yeah, Sue, you're right. I mean, we are really in an unprecedented time right now. Um, it's a beautiful thing, the Dobbs decision, you know, came down and, and it really corrected the horrific um, wrongs that Roe v. Wade put. You know, the Supreme Court had their thumb on the scales of life, really. And so we're so thankful for the Dobbs decision, which now returned um, that uh, decision to the will of the people through their state and elected federal officials. And what we are seeing is is something great in parts of the country and something just awful in other parts of the country. One thing you're not going to hear from corporate media are the wins for pro-life that have happened, that are, are happening across this country right now. Few of them will report on the fact that we now have 25 states half of the country that have put pro-life protections in place uh, to save babies. And also, in addition to something they'll never report on, are the states that are putting hundreds of millions of dollars in funding to go to pregnancy resource centers to help mothers to serve those moms and to give them, you know, new life and support and continued resources for years to come. That is a beautiful and amazing thing that we should all be communicating about, sharing, getting involved in, helping but you're right. On the other side, we have the other half of the country, really, who are just putting no limits on abortion. I, I really was shocked, Stu. You know, a, a few months ago, I started to realize this trend where, you know, the especially particularly the Democrat Party, but the pro-abortion lobby in itself, you know, they've always tried to really push abortion. But what we're seeing is now, just in the last few years, they're not even wanting to put any limit on abortion. And that is shocking. And I think a lot of Americans don't realize that. And when I started to dig into this to really look, are there any Democrats that are calling for any limits at all? I'm having a hard time finding anyone. But the issue is they want to play it both ways. They say that they don't support all trimester abortions, but that's a lie. Because we see that they already have seven states right now with no limits, including Washington, D.C., all nine months of abortion for any reason. And as we look at the legislation that they're putting in place on these different state ballots and across the country, this is exactly what they're pushing for. Abortion on demand, undefined, no limits. And another thing that people don't realize, stripping parental consent and notification. So even as a parent, you don't even have to know or consent if your child were to get one. What are you doing with the, the your ministry, Susan B. Anthony? You, you guys are doing a lot for this. What what what's what can our listeners do to get active, to be involved? I mean, first of all, we don't need to support people who are just viciously pro death and that are, mm -hmm. you know, just it's it's amazing. It's such tragic. People, you know, Barack Obama talked about being this great Christian guy. But several times, as a state senator, this is all documented. This is an attack on him. Just his, his record says that he supported repeatedly the uh, Born Alive Act. 
where a baby was born that survived an abortion, uh, Senate, then Senator State Senator Obama refused to allow that baby just to be held for the few minutes before it died. And and he has been the most aggressive pro-death, like kill our young president, you know, and, and, and uh, pre- of course, President Biden's they're just like, I don't, you know, get that. And it's really, we're not a we're not a pro Republican, pro Democrat radio show. We're truth talk. We're pointing people to Christ. But Jesus Christ exalted life. I mean, his cousin leaped in the womb, you know, of Elizabeth when she when she encountered Mary. I mean, this is uh, you know, uh, thank God that he was in a crisis pregnancy, Emily, and his mom kept him. And we have the Savior, you know, born of a virgin. Yeah, Sue. I mean, you make a really good point. In fact, our president was just talking about this recently, which was you know she's been she's been fighting for life for a long time, and she was telling us you know it didn't. Use used to be like this. She used to work across the aisle, you know, with with lots of people, Democrats, Republicans. It's just really unfortunate that right now we are not seeing Democrats put any limits or boundaries or fight for life. And of course, as you know, it's so precious. And I also want to point out, I think a lot of people forget to talk about the mothers in this conversation. I myself um, was a mother. I, I, I am a mother. I had two unplanned pregnancies under the age of 22. And I am so thankful for the pregnancy resource center that allowed me to give my son life uh, through an open adoption with his family that I got to pick out and then also helped me with uh, with my daughter. So, I mean, we have really, as, as uh, Christians, as, as Americans, need to come along and understand the good work that's happening at these pregnancy resource centers and support them and get involved in, in the lives of single mothers who really need this help. Another thing that I want to point out for your listeners, because I know this is a faith-based audience of Christians, I was talking recently with a Planned Parenthood, former Planned Parenthood um, staffer. She was telling me, Sue, that she was in church the entire time and never once was the issue raised, mentioned, um, never once did they talk about life. I've talked to other friends who work at pregnancy resource centers, and they say that they try to talk to churches, to talk to their congregations about how to get involved, to to really support moms and support life. But I think we have a culture now, and, and unfortunately in some Christian circles, where this is deemed political and, and not ministry, and that is just not true. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, people telling a pastor, don't don't support the local pregnancy center. Don't help these moms in a crisis pregnancy because that's a political issue. Come on, that's hogwashing. We can get mad at these politicians, and we want to pray that these folks that are hard against life and hard left will come to know Christ. That's the solution to heart change. But what can we do to get behind these local crisis pregnancy centers? There's all kind. Of, everyone listening to my voice, there's an area pregnancy center. They can go volunteer. They can go give a Bible to a mom or, or pay for some diapers or go hold a baby, babysit, love. Give money to them. They have the resources. Pay for an ultrasound. Isn't it like 80% of moms that see an ultrasound keep their baby? Yes, Stu. I mean, it is astounding. And something else that is never mentioned, studies show that post-abortive moms want to keep their children. They just got the abortion because they felt like they didn't have the financial or emotional support that they needed to be able to keep their child. So the, the need is there. What can we do? Give us a little more like a website and an action point to help us uh, move forward and to be positive in our life. Again, we can curse the darkness or we can light a candle. One of my dad's favorite quotes from, I believe it was Burke or Wilberforce, whoever said that, God bless him. But what, what can we do? Give us some hope, Emily, as we get out of here. Absolutely. There's lots of different ways that you can really be a champion for life. Uh, one of the things that I highly suggest is going to our website at sbaprolife.org so you can educate yourself on the politicians that are pro-life. You can see where they stand. Um, You can learn. Please don't be fearful of these conversations. It is so important to have these tough conversations with your friends, your family, those in your community. Um, Really just we need pro-lifers in government who are really affecting change for life. So go out and vote. And also, you know, if you feel the calling to run, do so yourself. Um, And then I just want to encourage everyone to educate yourself also on this science and the stats of life. We are fearfully and wonderfully made uh, in the womb. I would really encourage you to check out on Google the voyage of life. It's all of the science behind the development of the child in the womb so you can really see how unique and amazing that child is. And then finally, just use discernment. The media really has a motive. They're very pro-abortion minded. And so when you're reading stories, um, just understand that they are not, uh, they are not pushing a pro-life message, unfortunately. Oh, wow. 
Well, whether you're excited about the language of pro-life or not, thank God your mom was pro-life or you wouldn't be here in this show right now. And Emily and I wouldn't be talking right now, and we're grateful for that. And we're thankful that God is the author of life. Emily, you are a blessing. Friends, get involved. And, like, that's the – I know we say, well, it's not the only issue. Abortion is one issue. It's the economy, stupid. We say all these little catchphrases. But, Emily, at the end of the day, if someone doesn't have a, a high view of life, of that heartbeat, of that precious human fashioned by God in the mother's womb, if we have a if we have a low view of that, that just tells you a whole lot of everything you need to know about that person. So I know it's – I don't want to bro- broad brush or be general, general overgeneralized, but isn't that true? You're right. I mean, we really need to have a culture of life in this country. I believe Americans are compassionate, but I believe that we're being lied to right now about this issue. There are moms just like myself who wanted and needed support, and and praise the Lord, I got it in the moment that I needed it. But just because the media isn't talking about it, please, everyone understand that there are mothers who really need the help here. Um, and they don't want to have to turn to abortion. And pro-lifers, we're offering life solutions and support, but the other side, they it. only offer death and dead ends. I love it. And this is a great way to love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you, Emily. Thanks for all you do. It was Susan B. Anthony. Give that website one more time, please. Absolutely. It's sbaprolife.org. And thank you, Stu, to you and your listeners. This is the Truth Network.